All right, this is the challenge video for anybody looking to move beyond um, the basic topics here before Thanksgiving. Uh, what we're going to work on today is we're going to work on what's called point slope form. And the objective is to move from point slope form into standard form. Now, there are three general types of equations that we use for linear functions. We use slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. It's probably the first one you would learn. We're not going to address that here. There is point-slope form, which is y minus y sub 1 equals m times the quantity x minus x sub 1. That's the one we are going to use here. Uh, and this is kind of an in-between step. So this one is, I'm going to give it a super neutral rating. Um, while we like the slope-intercept, and we like standard form, which is ax plus by equals c. So these are the two that we like. The one in the middle, point slope, is really not used very often. Um, it's used more to get to the other two. So oftentimes, we would get some info, whatever the information is. Um, we would put it into this equation, and then we would farm it out to one of these two types. So leaving it in point slope form is normally kind of rare. Uh, it can be done, but we don't usually do that very often. So uh, one example here, let's imagine we have a point, um, 3, 5, for example, and let's imagine we have a slope of, I don't know, let's go with 1 fourth. Now I'm choosing these kind of at random, so it's very possible we're going to get kind of an ugly answer, but ugly answers are answers nonetheless. So here we go. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this first into an equation, right? So I just gave you some info. Specifically, I gave you a point and a slope. So we're going to use the point-slope form. So here's how we do this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and substitute my 5, which is my, my first y. And I'm going to substitute my 3, which is my first x. And I'm going to substitute my slope into the slope. And we're simply going to plug those numbers into this equation. So I'm going to have y minus 5 equals 1 fourth times the quantity x minus 3. All right, so now I've taken my information and I've made it into an equation. So I'm going to zoom in on this equation for now. Now, within that equation, um, I notice a couple things. First, I notice that I have parentheses. And generally speaking, if I'm trying to convert to either slope-intercept form or standard form, you'll notice that there's no parentheses in those two generic forms. So we're going to automatically kind of try to get rid of the parentheses, and I'm going to do that using distribution, 1 fourth x minus 3 fourths, all right? Uh, the next thing you'll notice if I zoom back out is that while there's nothing preventing these m's and b's and a's and b's and c's from being fractions, um, it doesn't really suggest we have fractions. So now I'm going to get rid of fractions. Uh, and to do that, what I'll do is visually I'm going to try to queue up whatever my denominator is. Now, in this one, my denominator is the same number. It's the number 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both numbers, sorry, both sides by the number 4. If I had more than one denominator, let's imagine that I had a, a 5 on this one and a 4. So I have a 5 and a 4. My least common denominator would be 20. So out here, I'd multiply by 20. Um, I always want to multiply by my least common denominator. That is not the case right here, but in the process of doing that, what you're going to find is that we're, we're going to eliminate all of our fractions. So here we go. 4y minus 20 equals 4 times 1 fourth. This is what's cool about this. 4 times 1 fourth is just 1x, and 4 times 3 fourth is just minus 3. So now we no longer have fractions. Uh, it's a very easy step to get rid of fractions. And then depending on what you're going to do, and our objective here is to turn this thing into standard form, uh, what you're going to notice about standard form is that the x and the y are on the same side. Uh, and there's some other rules here as well. The thing that's in front of x is always positive. Oops. And we're generally going to have your a, b, and c be whole numbers. Um, or I guess we'd call them integers. So a, b, and c will be integers. Different teachers are going to have different specifics, um, but that's the general idea. Get the x and y on the same side, make a positive, and get a, b, and c to be integers. And that will be what we would consider standard form. So when I come back down here, um, I need to put the x and the y on the same side. So usually we're used to seeing that on the left-hand side. So watch what we're going to do. So 4y minus 20 minus x equals negative 3. So I move the x. 
Now I'm going to move that minus 20 to the other side so I get it out of there. So I have 4y minus x equals 17. And now I have, geez, I feel like I have almost everything. Um, I have my integers, 4, negative 1, and 17. I have the x's and the y's on the same side. Uh, but I do notice that the thing in front of x is negative, and I don't want that, right? So in this example, my a value, the thing in front of x, is negative 1. So I'm going to change a couple things around. First, I'm going to move some things. I'm going to move the minus x to the front. I'm going to move the positive 4y second. And I'm going to bring this mine, uh, equals 17 down. Um, I do like the x and the y to be in order. And now I'm going to go ahead and do a simple step. I'm going to multiply the entire thing by negative 1. Um, negative 1 times negative x will be positive x. Negative 1 times positive 4y will be minus 4y. And negative 1 times 17 will be negative 17. And now we have what's considered standard Lots of steps here, but the key component is you take your information, and you plug it into your equation, and then in our example, then we worked on converting it over into standard form. Rewind and we watch as needed. Um, good luck converting things into standard form.